Hello, everyone. This is John Burgos, and welcome to tonight's Masterclass edition of Beyond the Ordinary Show. And this evening, we have the amazing Sandra Walter on, and it's it's such an inspiration because getting to witness someone who authentically walking their path and in that having these direct embodied experiences that would seem extremely unique, but compelled to share the truth of those experiences on an ongoing basis and how that truth matches up to a reality that's finally catching up to it through science, through other people's embodied experience by making, normalizing, let me take that back, normalizing the experience by being open about it, by sharing the truth of the reality. And in that, you can't help but to become a way shower. And Sandra's been a way shower for so many of us and an ascension guide and a gatekeeper. And she continues to do so in her own unique, beautiful way. And thank goodness for that because it's bringing us into new frontiers as these energies expand. And to follow Sandra and to listen is to remember and to learn anew. Um, and it's with that, that I want to thank you so much for being on today and just, again, bringing forth your embodied experiences, these wisdoms that, that you're sharing with the rest of us. Oh, blessings, brother. It's so lovely to reconnect with you. Blessings, everyone. Welcome. Hmm. So, Sandra, to dive right in, crystalline DNA. Give us a 101 basic of what the crystalline (laughs) DNA entails and what it means to you. Crystalline DNA has been in the conversation for a couple of decades. Some refer to it as 12 strand or 144 strand or divine DNA. But what it is, is the etheric aspects of our two strand DNA, the kind you can see under a microscope, are activating through the ascension process, through the ascension window. So it's always been there. These other aspects or strands, layers, fields have always been there. But now that the energies have shifted and the awakening and the ascension is on, we are starting to become aware and reconnect these etheric aspects of DNA. DNA is the key to the experience of shifting dimensions, shifting realities, ascension itself. It's a very divine creation. And and DNA itself creates our personal collective and multidimensional experiences in form. It is the thing that is interfacing with our higher self, our multidimensional self, our interdimensional and ultra-dimensional energies and awareness and consciousness with the body vehicle and the external reality. So the DNA is actually the thing that is creating the experience and it's swayed and directed by our subconscious, by our beliefs, by our emotions, by our thoughts, by our feelings, and most importantly, by our heart centers. So the more we get into heart coherence and our heart center, the more we're able to activate and hold the awareness of these etheric aspects of our DNA in our consciousness. And it starts turning on things in the body, not just the heart, but our third eye, our interdimensional chakra systems, our ascension column, our awareness, most importantly, our higher consciousness and the ability to merge with that. It's all happening through the DNA, which is quite fascinating (laughs) because I've been having conversations as of late with uh, folks who have been working in the lab with DNA. And I really wanted to initiate conversations that bridged all the information that's been received on 12-strand DNA and the esoteric aspects of DNA with the the unexplainable things that were happening in the lab with DNA, and they were referring to it as 
the quantum aspects of DNA because, uh, you know, quantum physics says the same thing. It's, or you're just dealing with consciousness. You're not dealing with things that you can consistently measure or examine in the physical. It's the effects that are ultra physical that, um, that are getting picked up in the lab that they did not understand. And we've received so much information through our conduits and channels. Uh, like like myself about what DNA is and what it's doing. So it's really beautiful that now we're getting to the point where this is just starting, but we're getting to the point where they're listening, we're trying to provide what we've received so that we can create healing in a in a faster way, so that we can speed up the, the healing process for everyone, maybe create higher level healing tools and really work together and see what works and test things and and exchange notes on what we've received from both sides of the fence so that we can tear down the fence and really open up the conversation so that we do get that unified new earth aspect where science and spirituality blend. Mm, That's beautiful. And to take the division and the judgment out of it, to really engender a process that that's much more graceful with the acceptance of the mind meeting the heart, the intellect really emerging um, and not fighting um, this heart wisdom that we've been taught to repel through the linear entrainment that we've had for such a long time through this Newtonian, Newtonian type of thinking. Um, right. So... So it's wonderful. So, Sandra, you, you, you notice that there's three phases of this DNA activation. Where are those? Yeah, when my so when my higher levels kind of try to break things down into steps so that we can kind of go after the um, these things in phases. They've done this with the ascension process, and and now they're doing it with DNA. So the phases of of actually activating the DNA so that it holds, not just activate and goes back to sleep, but actually holds a awareness of the DNA in in the cells and in the consciousness, Uh, the phases were sequential. So the first step, the first phase, was healing and coherence. And healing had to do with all of the emotional clearing and dealing with the subconscious and dealing with our thought patterns and getting ourselves into alignment and a lot of direction on supporting the physical structure in order to hold that higher vibration because the DNA starts to, um, DNA is a, is a light receiver and generator. It's like an antenna. So in order for it to hold a higher frequency and a higher level of of light or vibration in the cells the physical body had we had to kind of prepare the bio landscape for that to occur and not create a whole bunch of disharmony or clearing or healing crisis in the body vehicle so that was all part of the healing step as well as heart coherence and they've actually proved this in in the lab with some of the quantum physicists have shown that Heart coherence has to be present, otherwise the DNA doesn't hold activations, doesn't hold frequencies, Um, which I found fascinating because that's always been, you know, the teachings of the masters, get into your heart, get into your heart, get into your heart. And and this is why. And a lot of the the DNA conversation and and a lot of um, uh, what's been received on DNA is, it's exactly what the masters have been talking about. And a lot of the terms and the things that they used even thousands of years ago, we're, we're just going, oh, my goodness, they were talking about DNA. They're talking about DNA. They're talking about DNA. <laughs> it's over and over again, all these different aspects. I'm like, oh, they're talking about the ability to hold more light, but it actually goes into what the the DNA is, is reacting to, the why all of this direction on uh, healing and coherence. And after um, healing, healing is, is pretty much consistent throughout. You know, supporting the physical is it's consistent. And there's always going to be phases of embodiment and ascension that take you to higher and higher uh, attunements or fine-tuning that you have to do in your own journey. And the heart center gets very large and very 
overwhelmingly beautiful as we go through this. But then it, it provided the, the landscape or the canvas for us to come in and do actual activations that truly uh, landed, registered on the, the physical consciousness, the physical landscape, so that our, our two strand could support the, the other strands, the other levels or fields or layers of DNA in a conscious way. It's actually opening up wormholes within the DNA to reconnect these other aspects of, of the DNA structure itself. So that was the activation uh, and embodiment, you know, the, the ability to hold DNA activations in, in the physical and in your own consciousness because it is a completely different state of consciousness. And after that, you get into quantum expansion. So that's phase three, the ability to hold it and express it and take on these mastery aspects that have been, we've been able to approach them and hold on to them for bits and pieces throughout our journey. But now that we're getting into embodiment as a collective so there's a lot of the collective that's going through the embodiment phase of ascension right now. And that leads into quantum expansion, not just in our own fields and our own DNA strands or layers, but on a collective level. So it's actually interacting with the crystalline grid system and the ascended, uh, the ascended planetary consciousness and creating what we call the rainbow bridge. So the rainbow bridge is actually rainbow DNA. So the rainbow serpent that the shamans used to see back in the day was actually DNA. I mean, so many of these metaphors apply to, oh, they were talking about DNA. And, and we've right. seen it in visions too, the gold strands with the rainbow codons. And we're like, oh my gosh. Like, and, and the codons vibrate so quickly that it looks like feathers. You're like, oh my gosh. It, back in the day, you would describe it. You would come back to the tribe and go, I saw the feathered serpent. And they were actually looking at this... Um, this 12-strand DNA activation that's going on. It's actually the bridge to a higher consciousness and a bridge to the experience, again, the experience in form. So if you tell the DNA and work with the DNA, it will actually open up and provide that experience in, in form. That's why our golden race DNA, the human, divine human DNA, is so coveted because it provides the possibility of experiencing the God self, the source of, of divinity in, in a physical experience, not leaving the body, but having the experience right through the body. That's why it's, it's so coveted. That's why it's considered a, a sacred gift to have divine human DNA. And we're approaching this in our lifetime. We're, we're not in Calimson and we're walking into it and people are embodying this, which is fascinating. Sandra, when, in the second level, you talked about that heart coherence. What does heart coherence look like? What does that entail? Well, heart coherence is the ability. It's not so much the ability to stay calm and stay in your heart and stay in love. Um, those are those are all beautiful, but the it, it's the ability to um, not respond to the external in a in a dualistic way. So it's really embracing the Trinity and allowing our higher consciousness to respond to um, uh, to well to to engage with the brain in a different way. So what heart coherence creates is much like a crystal or a beam of light. The more pure it gets, the brighter it gets, the more energy and information it can hold. And with our heart centers, they open up as this diamond portal, this diamond stargate of pure source light. And then it starts affecting the way that you respond to stimuli, the way you respond to uh, drama or uh, emotional situations. It's how fast you can recover or stay in your heart is coherence. So you don't get swayed by the external as much and then eventually it, it doesn't 
affect you at all. You're coming at every situation with divine love and divine neutrality and this beautiful divine coherent state that we get into. And that is true embodiment, the ability to to hold that frequency of mastery where you no longer can create distortion for others or yourself any longer. It's actually associated with a strand or a layer of, of DNA. And that's your mastery levels uh, clicking in. And it, it provides that experience. And again, the experience is key. So it's beautiful to be aware of it. But when you start embodying that level of consciousness that is your higher mastery ascended state, it affects everything. It affects yeah. how you speak. It affects how how you interact with uh, the kingdoms and the elementals and people and Gaia and the cosmos and you you just start becoming unconditional love in every situation and it you'll notice you'll notice how it starts changing the way you think the way you feel everything everything changes when you can hold that heart coherence consistent practice and intention and then boom all of a sudden you're starting to not just activate, but hold those etheric strands of DNA in the field. Wow, wow. It's like I can feel that and what's what's swirling up. And I bet all of you all on the call can relate to how we're each individually in our own experience touching that over and over, maybe not even glimpsing it, maybe holding it for longer periods of time uh, through different experiences that we're having. I feel a lot of people are going into that aspect, at least in the communities that that I'm participating in, I guess I would call it. Right. Right. And understanding, too, it's an act of divine service. I mean, the embodiment phase of ascension is the most challenging. I mean, you talk about ascension symptoms and everything in the beginning, that's nothing. Well, Once you get into (laughs) embodiment... You're actually embodying a completely different state of consciousness. Now, the physical stuff is um, is evening out as we go through this embodiment. And the 2020 timeline that we're already experiencing uh, has beautiful gifts for us and blessings. But as we activate and, and rebundle this DNA, to we allow the higher self to take command of the journey, and that's in order to serve the collective operation of ascension. So it is an act of divine service and allows you to interact with higher levels of consciousness, with flow and ease and grace. And it actually overrides dualistic time dynamics because there is there and there's a strand responsible for your grounded experience of time, actually providing the experience of time in a physical vessel. And when the 12 strands start kicking on, it's overriding the experience of time. So you're doing all of this clearing and and your emotions and memories, like uh, the charge of, um, of dualistic thinking or emotional memories actually create the experience of time. So when you start doing emotional clearing and activating the DNA and getting into the heart where there's flow, you start vibrating with a higher consciousness. And then your experience of dualistic time or time being linear goes away. And many of you have experienced that, but when it becomes consistent, wow, it's it's challenging at first because you're attempting to tap back into what feels like an old structure in linear time uh, to, you know, pay your bills, pay your rent, <laughs> show up on time, um, those those kinds of things. Um, but it becomes uh, it becomes like a play thing, something you play with rather than um, the, the kind of challenging thing when you start losing memories and you start losing uh, a grip on linear time dynamics. You wake up, you don't know what day it is or what month it is <laughs> or what happened yesterday. It just doesn't matter. It's not frustrating. Yeah. It's just, you're like, well, okay, all right. Because this is how the higher self operates. The higher self operates in a completely different dynamic and time is flowing and you come in and you leave and you, you know, you tap in for an experience and then you leave again. It's, it's really 
beautiful and flowy. And as we get used to it, oh my goodness, it's uh, it's quite a freeing experience. And then the more freedom you can feel in your fields and your heart, the more DNA code activation you can receive, and it all it's all beautiful. I mean, talk about <laughs> just a beautifully elegant design. It's gorgeous, really gorgeous. The it's way it all works. <laughs> That timelessness, though, can be a little disorienting at first because you can be swept away in it so be- oh, or wrapped yes. up in it so beautifully, and then you come back, it's like, hold on a second. Was that two hours ago, two days ago, or two weeks ago? Because I can't exactly. remember. Let me ground back in to try to conjure. And it's, it's, it's like you're jumping to different realities to try to get back the memory. It just it doesn't make sense. It's right. weird. Right. And it's wonderful. But we, we- but the beautiful thing is your DNA is a record of everything you have done, are doing, and will do in this planetary realm as well as the galaxy. But it's a record. Now, there's layers that are responsible, strands that are responsible for keeping the record of everything you have been. So in the new age, we were digging around the past, obsessed with the past. Who am I? What did I do? Who have I been? And you get into this embodiment phase and it starts washing all that away and you feel Mm. timeless. And then, well, I'm a little curious about what the possibilities are for the future because the DNA also keeps the quantum record of all the possibilities for your life streams, everything Mm. you could possibly engage with. So it's all there. And as it gets more flowy and we start to kind of master this... um, timeline jumping and flowy time it will get easier Mm, that's so good now something that you have done as a grid keeper um going to different portals um to to hold the space for it to help with the activations or maybe for the memory to be reignited um we're doing that all in in a i would say in a new and expanded way and you know, there's an awareness that you have of how our DNA is actually communicating with the crystalline grids of Gaia and crystalline grids of Gaia. Yes, and that was a really fascinating conversation I had with uh, Dr. Glenn Ryan, who has been studying DNA. He is the one who's responsible. Wow, back in the day, in the 90s, for discovering that DNA was a toroidal field antenna and actually saw that under the microscope that the DNA was was winding into into little toroids in the cells when it was activated with different frequencies and uh which was which was an absolute reflection of what we've been teaching with the torus fields and the fields of the universe and the fields of of the galaxy and the fields of the solar system and the fields of Gaia and the fields of of our own consciousness and now it's right down to the microscopic level of this being uh, an aspect of what creates the the twelve strand DNA is that that torus field uh, interaction, and we had this fascinating conversation because I was like, okay, I have a really smart man in my presence. Let's talk about this because he's willing to talk about DNA, and I told him a couple of my stories about. Uh, how I had I had done gate work and you show up and significant things happen. Um, I you know I had just come off of the July 4th activation with the big earthquakes um, in Ridgecrest, and I was like, look, you know, I I show up in a certain spot and they say it's about my DNA that a- allows for different gateways to open and for different things to happen can we just dive into a conversation about how that could be possible? Because they're saying it's the crystalline structures within me and my crystalline DNA that's speaking to crystals in the ground and etheric structures and these crystalline encoded stargates. And we actually dug into it and, uh, and, and in theory, <laughs> created in theory how that was possible. And I really loved that... Um, that the the pure in intention you know we're learning to to work with crystals in a different way and all of the the gatekeepers have been working with crystals and planting in, them in the ground with this intention to create this newer crystalline grid system and connect it with the crystalline grid and then they merged 
uh, earlier in the year, and and it's just been, um, but we've been kind of walking around going, we know it works, not exactly sure why, but but it works, and it, it turns out that it's actually fields strands uh, in our DNA that are keeping that record of what we did in the past and then you show up in the same spot and your DNA goes, aha, and through your heart coherence, pure intention, you're, in, you're opening yourself as a pure conduit and you're able to open and unlock that stuff right because your DNA is in the presence of that again with a higher consciousness saying, so it is. And it's it's really be- it's really beautiful because there there have been a lot of um, insiders coming forward talking about how the galactics operate uh, their light ships through their DNA and consciousness and I'm like yeah it's ex- it's exactly what we're doing with with the stargates and some of these ancient structures showing up and you can unlock things and you can open things and there's information there and it's all stored in in the etheric and sometimes in the actual physical crystal structures or ancient stones um or you know ancient sacred sites have that as well so i'm unlocking things here in sedona that i haven't touched in a very long time but of course time was all the illusion so i'm just i'm just kind of back here again you know opening up what i was there before beautiful Mm -hmm. really beautiful yeah yeah but it's an embodiment that allows it yeah, and I love the experience because, again, they parallel in different ways. And to have you talking about it in the way that you do is just confirmation for so many of us to go through these experiences that don't know why. So when that earthquake mm-hmm. happened, I know that you were you were traveling along um, one of the fault lines. But right when that earthquake happened, I had just pulled into Mount Shasta, parked my car. It was like, I am so dizzy. I've got to get out. And I was nauseous. Like, why am I nauseous? What is-? And then we turned on um, – so I, I go online, I check on my phone, it's like, you know, looking for something, it's like, Ooh. oh, major earthquake along the line. It's like, oh, there you go. Um, oh, my goodness, that's so fun because I, so I was called off Shasta on July 3rd. They're like, you, you have to be in uh, Mono Lake on July 3rd, and then you have to be in this in this spot in the Mojave the morning of July 4th, like literally called off the mountain mm-hmm. and all these light workers, all these light workers came to Mount Shasta. They're like, I was called here. And I'm like, yep. I just left. So that is so fun because <laughs> I found like the kind of musical chairs that we were all doing uh, during that whole time period to be really fascinating. But yeah, I was, I was sent to, to be there when, when that occurred, um, which was, I mean, it's, kind of a interesting experience to be there opening up gateways and the ground is moving under your feet but um there was there was a lot going on there though it was a quite a, a large operation so uh and the, the beautiful part of this sandra is that we we can't make this up we are so guided how is it yeah. that you how have you become aware of your guidance how is it that you follow that wisdom that intuition and i'd love for you to share that so that other people can get a sense of perhaps what's available for them as well Mm, well in that specific so mount shasta is one of the major meeting points or has a etheric uh temples and meeting spaces for the masters and the galactics so when you're um I am involved with the, the brotherhoods and sisterhoods that actually meet there in the etheric. And uh, I've had communication with them ever since I came to Mount Shasta. That's why I came to Mount Shasta. So after seven years uh, of being there, they can be quite direct. You know, they would, they just <laughs> close down my house. Your house is turning into an Airbnb. And, you know, this is how, everything just got shut down. And my trajectory changed, and we went through three collective timeline shifts. So in April, timeline shift. May, timeline shift. June, another timeline shift. It was boom, boom, boom. And then uh, they were extremely direct. Uh, they just gave me direction. Now, the masters are, are quite clever because if they told me what was going to happen, 
uh, ahead of time, I would have had like performance anxiety or something. <laughs> so I, I was like, okay. And they, you know, they don't do that. They're very direct about where the, where the gates are, but they won't tell me what's actually going to happen. They were like, this is preventing, um, the, the only thing I had was like prevent, uh, there was a major Syrian stargate that had to open at Mono Lake. And then there was the prevention of a major, um, triggering of the plate system um, that was going to be attempted because an underground base was going to get taken out. There was just like very, there was a lot going on. And it was also this major activation of the crystalline corridor that so many light workers and grid keepers have been working on for, for like a decade. I mean, I've only been in, on it since 2013, but, um, you know, everyone's been working on this, this uh, area from, from uh, Maui over to Shasta, down to Sedona, over to L.A. and back again. And this whole area was going to get mm -hmm. activated while these other things were happening. So they have to call, like, a master gatekeeper to, like, be there. Um, and, and as far as I know, I was the only one who was out there in the desert that morning. But um, it, it was quite intense. But as far as receiving guidance, um, they could be very direct with me. I've been a conduit for a while. So it's I, I, I know what's happening when they start showing up in your field and and uh, being very direct about what's going yeah. on. So they'll just they'll take things away and put other things in place. And I'm like, OK, <laughs> you just got to follow it. Got to follow yeah. it. You know, follow it. Follow your heart. Yeah. Amazing. And, and talk about being direct about what's coming up. Um, what do you see with this 2020 um, portal that we're stepping into? Yeah, so the 2020 gate actually opened uh, with all of those timeline shifts. So we were already in the 2020 energies by mid-year. And, and obviously, to anyone who's going through the embodiment or the ascension uh, process, it's it's getting more and more refined and more intense as we get closer to 2020. Uh, there are significant um, trigger points for uh, the energies stepping up. They are quite consistent right now, and the gates are quite consistent. But um, this is this is kind of interesting. This is the last year that we celebrate the 11-11, the, you know, the 10-10-10, the 11-11, the 12-12 as significant. Like time is going to be experienced in a different way for the ascending collective as we go through these, these final gateways. So the 11-11 this year and the 12-12 this year are uh, significant times to get together with your brothers and sisters and really focus on calling in the new earth experience now and feeling that and celebrating it uh, with your, your groups and your ceremonies because um, we're literally overwriting a lot of uh, lesser timelines in this work that we do. So the 12-12 is actually, well, it's a 12-12-12 this year because it's a 12 year. And when I took a look at that, because it kept coming in all year, all year long, 12-12-12, 12-12-12. And then I realized, oh, it's a seven year anniversary mm. of the 12-12-12, which was extremely significant to gatekeepers because that's when wow. Gaia actually made her ascension, not on the 12-21, but on the 12-12-12. She created that platform. So now we've got our sacred seven-year anniversary, which the masters are all crazy about the sevens. So now we've got this focus on the 12-12-12 as this, again, uh, for, for gatekeepers, you always feel it first, so focus. We're having a gathering here in Sedona. I invite everybody to come. We're opening uh, that 12-12-12 gateway again for Gaia, on behalf of Gaia, to oh, express this next level. Yeah. And then we've I'm got... I'm going to have one on Kauai, so we can, we're all going to link up. All right. Beautiful, beautiful. And yeah. then you've got solstice. Always the most right. sacred passage of the year, December solstice through the new year. And there's an eclipse on Christmas night. How good can oh, wow. that? There's an eclipse that. there's a an eclipse on December twenty fifth, uh, in the evening if you're on the on the Pacific coast. Uh and then we've got another eclipse January tenth. 
seventh sense, but something like that. Um, so we've got a little eclipse sandwich in there. Oh my goodness, it's just uh, it, it's just such a powerful time. And the the 2020, of course, um, symbolically brings clarity. So we're probably going to see a lot more of the God within. And that's the thing you really have to focus on right now is not what's happening. Uh, The external is whatever people need as long as they need it, right? But for the the folks that are creating, co-creating the ascended new earth realities, you have to put all of your focus there right now because that will bring you into the vibrational alignment with that higher experience, with that Christed timeline that is not going to, it doesn't feel like a timeline. If you're getting the no time and the time gaps and the the um, not feeling like time exists at all anymore and you're just kind of like dipping, dipping into linear experience and then going back out again, uh, that's that's the experience of the primary Christed timeline of the 2020 timeline. It does not feel like duality, like it, like it's time-based any longer. So we're really going to have to open our hearts and flow into that and remember that the new earth realm is creative. You know, Gaia gave us a message last year that in the new earth, in the new realities that we have co-created, stories don't stick. Experiences come and go, but there's no density, there's no judgment you know, things are created and uncreated with the same ebb and flow. So when you're in the vibration, matching the frequency of that experience, you'll notice it's starting to impact your own life stream right now. Things are created and uncreated. You're not uh, attached to outcomes. You create with wild abandon <laughs> and just let it, you know, just let it present, let it be. And just offer your gifts and offer your service. And there's no, oh, I, I, you know, I, I need this and I need that. Like everything's provided. It's a very flowy, beautiful state of consciousness. And that is the 5D, you know. And, and you're starting to feel it as the embodiers step up. It provides this collective DNA activation. Tap in with us. Every Sunday, Global Unity Meditations, we're sharing those codes and upgrades with any willing heart. Anybody who matches that frequency and desires it is getting an upgrade. But you have to say yes. You have to make that choice. Very first step in DNA activation, choice, (laughs) intention. And then you get the initiation and the alignment for the activation. Mm -hmm. Wow. Ah, it's so good, Sandra. And again, the the way that you're you're delineating it for us. God, I can't even say the word right now. Um, it's, it's just, it's landing so beautifully and th- mm-hmm. it's really funny. And, and I want to ask you about this because there's something that's coming up in the awareness and I, I keep hearing the F word over and over, over the, over the last few weeks and it's landing so, so profoundly for me in faith. There's something about faith that we're stepping into. And I believe it has to do with that mm-hmm. seven year letting go, letting God, those things. It's there, oh, but there's a co-creation to it. Well, and remembering that there are strands or layers of our DNA that actually amplify that as we open our hearts and as we open these wormholes and layers and stargates within our own DNA, there are aspects to that divine DNA that actually support and amplify faith in God, in the path, in the ascension, in your own spiritual quest. There is extreme support that comes through that is encoded into your own DNA that amplifies that. So when you start really feeling the yes, the trinitized beingness, the the higher self that has absolute faith in source, in love, in harmony, in peace, and balance, it washes, I'm, I'm telling you, brother, it washes the lower stuff away. 
So that faith in your own heart and in the absolute presence of unconditional love that is that is ever present and absolutely infallible and indestructible, that indestructible power and presence of source of the infinite creator, you will start feeling it so strongly because you're opening yourself to be a conduit of that in these realms. There is actually aspects of our DNA and codes that click on that amplify that because you're saying yes. Not just having faith and being hopeful, but it's actually a, a dynamic that increases the the God within. And you're starting to become a son of God. You know, that's the Christed thing. S U S U N S C a son, you know, you're becoming that crystal and diamond consciousness in form and it takes over. You know, once the DNA gets to that level and they're all quantum. So it's not one level is on and then the next level is on. They are all talking to each other. DNA is extremely intelligent. It's only going to give you what you need, uh, what you can handle, and it's quantum. So they're all working together. You know, you've got levels that, that truly interact and amplify divine mother consciousness, heavenly father consciousness, quantum God consciousness. And when when those start uh, vibrating in your fields and in your conscious awareness, it's a very different experience. And I feel like all of the, you know, over the last few decades especially, getting everyone prepared for a different state of consciousness and raising our frequency so that we can hold and interpret that consciousness right through our DNA and right through our body vehicle, you'll start feeling it. You'll start feeling how the embodiment is rewriting your experience. You're not having the lower self experience any longer when this stuff kicks on and holds in your experience. And holds. That, that's interesting, Sandra, because when you talk about carrying the codes and, and that, are you talking like, would that also equate to like a, a vibrational level of coherence that then other people get attracted to as well? So we become kind of code keepers as well because we've achieved this vibrational level and other people resonate up towards that because we're able to carry it or, or how's that defined for you? Yes. For for me it feels like the pure Christed state coming into the physical. So all of the masters that were able to activate and etherically reconnect all those strands and layers were holding the capabilities of, of miraculous healing. It's actually a strand responsible for that. they they're holding the uh, quantum codes for um, not just healing, but activation of people's consciousness and activation of the divine human genome itself, which holds the possibility for Christic consciousness. So when we ourselves start turning on and reconnecting those codes and reconnecting the sacred gateways within our own DNA, I mean, you're becoming a gatekeeper of your own DNA and your own oh. heart through the through this journey, but when you're doing that, it really becomes quite effortless. Effortless, and you start re, you start walking around with this giant field of oh. coherent light and Christed codes, and your the the beautiful thing is you're allowing your higher levels to just work right through you. You're allowing the power of God to work right through you. You don't even have to do anything. Now, that's the beautiful part. Yeah, that's the beautiful part about being a master is it is somewhat flawless and effortless. You just walk around and things happen. You know, you direct your consciousness a little bit at something and boom, it's taken care of in the proper way, in, uh, in whatever method and whatever level is proper for the receiver. So if someone's willing to receive, you're just holding this field. I mean, we've always heard that healers are just holding the space for something miraculous to occur. And the bigger your space gets and the clearer your space gets, the more miraculous uh, things start to self-correct. Your reality starts to self-correct. And it goes on autopilot when we're able to hold these. These frequencies oh. and these different strands, beautiful. 
And so we become gateways for others as well during the process, just through the process of being, become living examples um, and embodied. Right, it's unified. Again. Right, and it's unified. Right. It's not personal. It's truly, mm-hmm. you you lose all the ego and the personality um, is, is just fading. Let's, let's go to a Q&A. So uh, we've got a question that came from Michael here in Kauai. And Michael asked if... If when we achieve heart coherence, we no longer respond, as Sandra says, in a dualistic way, are our emotions no longer a part of the guidance system? Do we no longer experience negative emotions or they just no longer throw us out of our center and we just no longer experience them as negative? Well, we all go through emotional clearing, and that's clearing of negative emotions. Uh, I just want to make that clear. We're just talking about negative emotions, the things that that sway you or or keep those memories going uh, in an uncomplimentary way. But heart coherence is is a state. It's not. Um, we're not talking about divine heart center activation. We're talking about heart coherence in this conversation as the thing that's needed in order to get DNA to hold higher frequencies. And it does, heart coherence would be one of the things that definitely assists with releasing negative emotions. Um, but the, the embodiment phase of ascension and the reconnection of higher and higher aspects of DNA and that, that awareness is what starts overriding the, uh, the emotional imprints that we that we leave in our in our dualistic um on our dualistic timelines our linear timelines so when you get to uh the the ascension layer or strand of of DNA it starts you start experiencing trinitized beingness which is our natural state of beingness no more dualistic separation but you start experiencing the god self your higher self the uh, higher levels as unified with you and that for me was a powerful phase of of my um of my ascension certainly of my embodiment um but it's really it depends on on your process as to how far along you are in your ascension process in order to be able to release uh negative emotions uh, immediately, but when your heart center turns on and your mastery turns on, and you allow the 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 diamond solar heart center to activate and and take over, it works in tandem with the brain, and then you train your brain to obey the heart brain <laughs> instead of the mind brain, yeah. and they work together, and they work together. It actually produces different chemicals in the body. So your body responds in a different way, and you, you you'll notice with uh, emotional clearing or emotional situations that they dissolve faster and faster, and eventually it does become somewhat instantaneous. I mean, you don't have the reaction that you used to have, and if you do have a mild reaction to something that's presenting uh, in your field or in your life stream, it's there there's it's like a a switch it's like you've trained your brain and you've trained your heart like thank you but no thank you like immediately yeah. and and it's just an, an immediate uh disconnect with absolutely no judgment there's a level uh-huh. of divine neutrality that comes with mastery where you're just kind of neutral all the time and so that your consciousness isn't responding to all this external stimuli in in a dualistic way it's kind of it's not um kind of up there out there or it doesn't affect me anymore you're just kind of very lucid very lovely very flowy very neutral and then you you make much better decisions in the moment because your your master strands are are actually creating the experience of being neutral and in the heart it's it's lovely. I have to say, I've noticed it in my own life stream being uh, a very persistent and, and lovely state of consciousness. Just, you know, you care 
that you don't carry. It's that neutrality state. It's lovely. I hope that answered the question. I think that's great, and I have to ask you, because my understanding around compassion is changing also. There's this depth of connection with my heart with different levels Mm -hmm. of compassion that are streaming through as well. What's been your experience? Mm -hmm. Yes, I feel that too, that pure uh, divine mother frequency of, of divine love and compassion is is beautiful because as that returns to us, that's the natural frequency of Gaia. So Gaia is gushing with that uh, with that frequency, and there's a lot of influxes coming right now, delivering higher and, and more refined states of that consciousness itself. You know, those kinds of codes are now able to land and be integrated into our DNA, into our experience, because DNA is creating the experience, so we're able to latch onto that, hold on to that, and you can feel it rewriting your experience of compassion. It's a, you talk about it, and I weld up like in a remembrance or a, a like a thankfulness, or a, I don't know, but yeah. it's just it's just so beautiful. Oh, no, I feel that. Some, mm-hmm. Yes. Something else that you mentioned, and I, I've got to ask you this question, I'd be remiss not to, but as our chemistry changes in our body, how does our nutrition and supplementation of that nutrition evolve as well? Yeah, we we dove into that in the um, in, in Module 2. Uh, we dove okay. into full support for the physical through this. So the silica structures, you know, we're migrating from carbon to carbon silica and into a, a silica-based structure. So the cells do change. The body does want different things. So you really have to pay attention to your body. Learn how to talk to your body. Learn how to talk to your DNA and go, what do you need right now? Because the fears of going into a higher state of consciousness because it can be overwhelming you're like wait 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 slow down and you go backwards and you start you know eating what you ate yesterday or doing what you did last year just to like dim down a little bit because you're you're going to have to go through those fears in order to go through these gateways you know you can't you can't be afraid of the change asking for the change at the same time So we really want to be very present and conscious with what our body is needing. A lot of the times the body just needs rest and water, but there are uh, quite quite a few supportive substances that assist with this, different supplementation, and, and a lot of things that you want to take out. I think a lot of it is taking things out of the diet right now that are making the cellular structure kind of do what they did yesterday. So we, we need to pay wonderful. attention. But yes, yes, yeah. brother. And module two changing. goes deeper into that. So that's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Excellent. Um, and I want to take this question that came from Carlos. I'm wondering this too, so thank you, brother, for asking. Carlos from New Bronzeville to ask, for the most advanced light workers, does romantic partnership have a new meaning now? What does it mean for light workers who are not able to find romantic partnership, or how do those partnerships function at this time now? Well, as you come into the Trinitized beingness and these higher states of consciousness, you you kind of won't care. The whole <laughs> relationship, needing somebody else, needing that completion, needing the twin, needing why do I, why don't, I, where's the other half of me? Why don't I have a partner? They all go, it all goes away. You know, mm. there's there's a level of spiritual maturity that allows your your field to open up, and then it invites in whatever is needed in the moment. Mm-hmm. So this, so even even the concept of uh, you know finding your your other half until death do you part, all of that, just kind of fading into what was, and as we come into what is again, there's there's flow. Divine partnership feels like goodness. It feels like more of a um, of a unified consciousness. There's a real brotherhood, sisterhood kind of feel to it. Yes, some people have divine partnership and they want to explore that, but it's not needed. 
it's it's a kind of old new age dynamic of I have to find my twin otherwise I can't ascend. Wow, that's an old story. You know, let's yeah. just let it go. If you want to explore that, wonderful, celebrate. But do not be surprised if it if it changes. <laughs> you know, five years, next month, ten years from now. Don't be surprised uh-huh. if it changes because our consciousness is changing, and uh, and I feel that we we do have to open the field for a redefinition of what sacred partnership means because the sacred partnership is of course your partnership with God with with the higher God self stepping forth and what and, and that becomes your priority rather than a very kind of earthbound physical priority of trying to find uh, the other light worker who's just as awake as I am and matches my frequency perfectly and oh my goodness that doesn't exist we are all unique <laughs> expressions of, <laughs> of uh, ascension you're never going to find somebody who vibrates at the exact same frequency as you are otherwise you wouldn't see each other um, you know we're all at, at different resonances in order to experience a, a physical at all but um but yeah, it just kind of fades out uh, the conversation and becomes something new. So all of us have been very good at trying to redefine what divine masculine and what divine feminine mean, what our roles are and everything very dualistic. Like, well, we have to redefine what it means to be a man. We have to redefine what it means to be a woman. And then you realize, oh... It's it's actually the, the union, not in the physical, but within, that we're all after in order to become the, the trinitized beingness that is, you know, the, the gateway for source to express right through us. So we, I feel like just kind of letting that fade into the background, if it's been on your heart or feels like, oh my gosh, like a, a desperation or a need um, I, I would let that go because then it pushes a, pushes it away and just get into how it feels to be in love with yourself and with all that is for the mm-hmm. moment. We're going through a very powerful shift. All of our timelines and realities are getting uh, shuffled at the moment. So I, I wouldn't feel disappointed in anything <laughs> that's going on yeah. with the life stream mm-hmm. right now. Just yeah. feel the love for for the self, for God, and for all that is, and really send that gratitude and love out to all that is, because the external realities need to to feel that calm and that again that compassion, that love that comes with this divine beingness. Mm, wonderful. It- like the song says, love the one you're with, meaning, meaning you. Um, in this <laughs> <Again>. case. <laughs> so, so good. Carlos, thank you so much for asking that question. A lot of people have um, resonance around that. I wanted to ask you, it came back to me. Where do you see your collective community, the people that are working with you in that stage of the crystalline activation? Do you see a lot of us at this heart opening expansion type of place? Are we glimpsing different phases of it and embodying and kind of mishmashing all of it? What's your awareness around it? Yeah, I feel like the the heart opening, like you said, that different level of compassion and unconditional love is really amplifying through the tribe, which that vibration in itself overrides all, all the lesser realities. But I'm also seeing some very interesting things happening with these uh, source level activations. This real, it's uh, and and we all had again this collective DNA activations because our our, our DNA becomes uh, a, a little network in itself. You know, you've got the human heart grid, and now we're getting into this collective DNA activation where all the DNA, the magnetics on the planet, have changed, and they're changing the magnetics in our cells, which create these magnetic fields of the DNA that talk to each other. So that in itself gets into unity consciousness. And we're starting to have these activations it con- consistently where we'll, we'll go into um, 
it's almost it's like a collective DNA activation, and we have them at the same time. So like last Friday night, we all had this. You know, everyone's talking to each other. We all get this this activation where we are we are experiencing a level of God presence over like just overtaking the the lower self completely for lengthy moments or hours at a time. It went on for about five or six hours. Mm-hmm. And it was like nothing we've experienced before, not scary, not painful, not super blissy either. It was just like you were completely aware that your consciousness and your DNA was being rewritten. So I, I feel that because that was happening for embodiers, and embodiers are, are kind of the way showers or, or the people that go through that experience first and then kind of disseminate it through the activated DNA because there's a, a strand, a, a level of DNA that's responsible for that kind of activation collectively as well because DNA is quantum. So it's talking to other quantum DNA in the quantum realms. So I find that really exciting for those on, uh, that are experiencing ascension, because you're, we're, we're starting to get, to get cohesive, to get coherent, uh, just, just from person to person as a, as a collective, which that in itself leads you into unity consciousness and the realms of new earth that operate from unity consciousness. Nobody goes astray and does something crazy anymore. We all work together. We all work for, yeah. The highest interests of all concerned, you know, and that's that's where we're going, and we're starting to experience it, and it's beautiful because by quantum effect, we're going to raise up every willing heart into those states a lot faster. There's a great acceleration that comes with 2020 into those higher levels of consciousness. It's quite beautiful. Mm. Wow, what a fascinating journey we're on. Um, and how wonderful to get to experience all this. It's such a gift. Um, and it's such mm-hmm. a gift to have you on this show or, and bring, again, these glimpses of awareness into a more grounded state. Um, it, it, it's so empowering and, again, so invigorating. So thank you so much, Sandra, uh, for what you do and the way that you share and just, uh, just for being awesome. It's so wonderful, as always, having you on the show. Thank you. Oh, thank you, John. It's always such a pleasure to be on. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Blessings to everybody. Yes.